trying to find that gold. Side on the corner, feeling brand new dope. Got a brand new phone. Side on the corner, feeling brand new dope. Trying to find that gold. Living for diamonds and finding a match. Broken, I'm bummy, but still got some cash. Making a dash when I'm running up fast. Can't calm down, don't know how to relax. Belly the piece, ripping the beat. Killer, killer cam, killer, killer OD. Gunning up cheese, gunning, gunning up cheese. Hey, what you want from me? Trying to find that gold. Okay, so this guy is going to go pretty fast, and I'll try to focus on practical things and less over explaining. Whether you're new to the spec or already familiar with how it works, there are video chapters you can scrub through to find what you want. However, if you want a complete effective breakdown, I'd recommend watching through at least once. This guide is also going to be for key levels 25 and under, which is like 99.5% of the player base. So it should be okay. I just am not comfortable enough and haven't done enough of higher keys. So just assume all my information is only going to be valid until 25s. If it works higher, then Merry Christmas, Santa came early, I guess. Okay, enough yapping. Let's dive into how the class works. DH has two major resources, souls and fury. Souls have many ways to be generated and their consumption heals you based on recent damage taken and through talents gives you damage reduction based on the number consumed. And with Spirit Bomb, they do more damage the more souls consumed. Souls aren't technically a class resource in the game. They are these random purple or green things that float around you and the amount of souls you have available to use are the amount of souls on the ground around you. Note that moving to or near souls will consume them for straight healing, so you kind of want to avoid this. And if you're already at five souls available and you generate more, you will instantly consume as many souls as is required, such that there can only ever be five on the ground at once. This means that in a sense, if you're in a panic trying to live, you don't really have to worry about overgenerating souls. Your biggest concern will be not generating enough, but you'll see even that's not really a problem currently. The next resource that's actually a resource in the game is Fury. It's the bar under your health bar on base UI, or it's in the middle of your weak aura pack. Fury has a lot of ways to be generated, but Soul Cleave, Spirit Bomb, and Fell Dev are your only spenders. But really, Soul Cleave is the main spender since the others either don't use as much or refund a large portion of their use. Both resources aren't really too much of a concern, so don't think you need to sit at 5 souls or sit at max fury waiting for something to happen. I'm just mentioning this because if you have a slight concern that you should be pooling these resources for big moments or something, that's a mindset that might hold you back later on, so just flush that one out of your brain for now. DH is not a class that needs to pool resource, rather you play a game of ping pong generating resources to max, then spending before generating again and so on. Breaking this rhythm to save resources unnecessarily will usually be detrimental to both your damage and healing. Before before we get into gameplay and talents, let me just break down where your damage and where your survivability comes from. Now I'm not going to read you any tooltips word for word, I'm just going to tell you what the spell in practice does. The least you can do when learning a class is just read each tooltip once after watching this guide. Same goes for talents later on. I'll let you know the impacts of each talent build and each talent choice and the gameplay implications, but again we're never going to be going word for word tooltip reading in any of these guides. So what actually does your damage? Showing damage breakdown here, Sigil of Flame will generally always be on top with the tier set, which by the way, all you need to know about the tier set is that it makes Sigil of Flame do some shit and that you want Sigil of Flame up every pull and don't want to overlap, but also want to keep it on cooldown. However, if we're being honest, if you overlap sometimes or don't have it up sometimes, the world will in fact not end. The rest of your actual damage dealing will come from Soul Cleave and Spirit Bomb, depending on your build. Then Immo Aura, Sigil of Flame, Elysian Decree, Fracture will all fall somewhere in the remainder of the top few spells. Now DH doesn't really have any pure damaging abilities. All your damage also has a defensive component. Playing defensively will naturally do a ton of damage. The real trade-off will be made in the talent builds and less in actual gameplay. So the defensive breakdown is more extensive. Now remember most defensive things have offensive perks and most of these interactions are governed by talents so just stay with me here we'll go through just the defensive parts of your core spells. Firstly your sigils all reduce magic damage done from the affected enemies by 8%. Additionally your sigil of flame gives you 15% parry chance against affected enemies. Demon spikes gives you armor and parry simple enough. Fiery Brand gives you 40% damage reduction and can spread to targets depending on which build you choose later on. Frailty, which is the debuff applied by Soul Cleave and Spirit Bomb, gives you stacking damage reduction and stacking leech. And finally, your biggest defensives, Meta and Feldev, give you massive armor and massive HP. Feldev technically heals for a bit, but that doesn't really matter. Now the final thing before we get into talent builds, let me talk about stats and if you need to target farm any specific items. With regards to stats, it kinda sorta doesn't matter. If you primarily play Havoc, 
Just stat for Havoc, which is Crit Mastery, and Vengeance will do just fine. However, if you only play Vengeance or want to play Vengeance at a higher level, here's how these stats work. But remember, main stat is king, meaning item level trumps everything else. The only time you really worry about secondary stats is if you're considering side grades at like the highest item level. Especially when it comes to weapons, you just want the higher item level weapon as soon as possible. The ideal Vengeance stat priority will be crit haste first. Mastery is mostly irrelevant. Doesn't hurt to have, so don't stress too much about it. Boosting crit and haste will make you take considerably less melee damage. Boosting versatility will make you take less spell damage. And if you're getting into higher keys in the 24 plus range, you can start equipping verse. However, the time at which you will need verse will completely depend on your individual comfort. If you just want to maximize damage, stack the hell out of crit and haste. And again, mastery will increase your damage done. So if you want to off spec havoc, don't stress about your mastery. I have done 24s and 25s as high verse, low verse, high mastery, no mastery. And honestly, the effectiveness of my tanking and how much that changed the outcome of the key didn't matter at all. It's just that if you have really low verse, you might notice spells hit slightly harder. And if you have really low crit, you will do obviously a lot less damage, but you'll also parry a lot less. But really, most tank gaps in gearing can be made up for in player skill and just experience. Now for high influence items you might want. I strongly recommend getting the cheat death trinket from Galakron's Fall. If you're ever scared to deplete a key you're going into, or trying a new route, or you just want a safety net, this is what you equip. It's much better than the talent tree cheat death because the stone scales give you 20% damage reduction after it procs, and it also gives you a magnificent amount of haste if it procs. Our talent tree cheat death is also very, very costly in builds, so you will not be taking it in any build that I recommend personally. I don't think it's necessary, and I don't even think it's that good of a cheat death. Other items that you don't need but would be nice to have. Engineering res is massive. Level engineering to get the knowledge that makes it unlikely for things to backfire. Then craft engineering bracers with these optional reagents that I made. You can bind the wrist to something and then just like that you have a melee range battle res. I recommend going into meta or fell diving prior to casting the res if you're in combat. It's generally pretty easy to get the res off this tank and it has saved many, many runs for me. So I strongly, strongly recommend this. Either Fire Act Trinket is also really good, or even both. Obviously, the tank one is defensive on a decent cooldown, and the DPS one is just massive damage. Double Time from Galakron's Fall adds roughly 1% damage done per weapon over the course of the dungeon. The actual Time Strike stat itself means nothing. The item has a hidden on equip effect, which is just a chance to deal more damage. The stat itself is purely cosmetic. But also this is just a tiny bit more damage, so don't stress too much about not having it. The Council of Dreams unique weapon is also really nice for Tyrannical. The stats you lose for equipping it do cost you a chunk of AoE damage, but the single target damage is massive. If you equip the weapon, you'll see it on breakdown, but if you don't equip the weapon, you see nothing on breakdown. That does not mean you did less damage without the weapon. The loss of stats is really, really hard to quantify when reviewing your own dungeons, but it actually does have a big impact, especially on AoE. That's why for the most part, you'll see most DHs running double double time because it's got crit haste, it's great stats, and it's just free extra 1% per weapon. Lastly, when it comes to embellishments, you can just run the slimy boots plus an armor patch for some hefty bonus damage and keys. And you can also just run whatever havoc embellishments you're gonna run for off spec. I personally run slimy boots and armor patch for damage and it works well as this is currently the highest DPS increase combo for vengeance overall. Although you can argue Lariat proccing at the right time in AOE will beat it by a lot potentially. Okay, congratulations, you made it to the actual meat of the guide. Let's talk about talents, builds, and rotation. The big disclaimer before we get into it is that tanking and healing are mostly feels craft. What this means is that if you don't vibe with a build, you shouldn't run that build at all. You will see top demon hunters running wildly different builds. Most of choosing a build has to do with your comfort and preferred gaming style. Don't let anyone convince you that your build is bad. Once everyone in the key is alive and the keys are getting done with great success, nothing really matters. Now looking at the class tree, this is the standard build. It gives you an AoE stun, cooldown reduction off of your Fear Sigil, some cool passive shit throughout, and you ultimately end up with both the Hunt, Elysian Decree, and Darkness with its cooldown reduction node. You can alternatively take this version which gives up Darkness and gives up Fear Sigil cooldown reduction, but it takes three extra percent mastery and some more movement speed. This is a super selfish build that I think is just worse, but it's your choice. Remember again, tanking is fieldy craft, so don't be afraid if you don't get good use out of Darkness to just drop Darkness entirely. Darkness is also very RNG, it's doubled percentage RNG in dungeons. At the end of the day, no one is really gonna expect you to have darkness to save the group. It's just sort of like a nice thing to have in dangerous moments. Throughout this guide, be okay with switching talents regularly. Like if you doubt something I say, try running it and then try not running it and see how that impacts your keys. Is it more fun or is it just worse? Is it harder to play? Stuff like that. Now for the spec tree portion, I'm gonna start with a basic build that I think you should run while learning and gearing vengeance. 
then show you what changes to make in order to eventually get to the best build, but also probably the least forgiving build to play. At the end of the guide, I'll also go over a more interesting secret bonus build that DHs seem to not like to talk about for some reason. Don't be afraid to go back and forth and I will explain how talent choices impact gameplay. But again, I'm not going word for word. We will go into a more rotation and priority breakdown after you've seen the different builds and talents. So you might have to go back and forth again. I'm sorry. Leave a comment if this order of operations is bad. I'm always open to feedback. The problem is just that talents massively affect spells. So I have to explain the talents and the spells. And I just don't know which one to do first because a lot of the spells don't do anything without taking the talents, but a lot of the talents don't matter until you know what the spell does. Anyways, yeah, this build is where I recommend new demon hunters to start. And this is how the build plays. You will go into a pack with demon spikes up, Throw a Sigil of Flame as you enter the pack, ripping Immo Aura, then using Soul Cleave to stack Frailty up to 3-5 to five stacks. Don't worry if I'm going too fast, this is just kind of an overview. Then you build a 5 Souls with Fracture if you aren't already at 5 Souls. Then you Spirit Bomb, Elysian Decree, Spirit Bomb, probably reapply Sigil of Flame at this point if the pack is going to live. Build 5 Souls again, Elysian Decree again, and Spirit Bomb again. This build will save Fiery Brand for single target damage reduction, meaning on big scary mobs in a pull or really just bosses because this build has no offensive component to Fiery Brand at all. Okay, here's why this is the starter build. These three talents allow you to have longer demon spikes, bigger damage reduction during and after demon spikes, and even cooldown reduction on the spikes. What this means is that you mindlessly can slap demon spikes over and over, and you will almost always have it up. As a result, you focus less on living, more on dealing damage and trying to understand the way the class works, and you can freely toss your sigils out to learn how and when you need to crowd control mobs. This entire build comes at a massive cost of damage, but this is the build I think you should run at the start of your Vengeance Adventures until you start feeling more comfortable with tanking as a whole and how the class plays. The first evolution of this build sacrifices the node which was previously giving you passive Fury Gen for this top right node that gives you more sigil damage on impact, and it makes it less punishing if you accidentally overlap Flame Sigil as it will stack and refresh the Sigil of Flame debuff. This is now also a rotational decision you can make in pulse. You can now choose to stack and refresh Sigil of Flame's damage to do more damage in the moment at the cost of lower Sigil of Flame uptime overall. Now this is more of a lower key consideration, but it's just adding one more thing for you to try to figure out while you're playing the class. Evolving the build once more, we will drop these two bottom talents to retake the free Fury Generation talent and this bottom left Soul Cleave talent. That just basically increases your single target damage by 50%, which is not a small number. This is going to be the difference between doing 60 to 70k on bosses and 90 to 100k plus. However, this build still has those demon spikes extensions and damage reduction talents. The only demon spikes perk you just lost was the cooldown reduction. So at this point, you will have to learn to not mindlessly spam demon spikes and actually consider its cooldown for once. But we retook the fury generation talent to help you with resource management during this new learning process. You also lost Soulmonger. Soulmonger is completely worthless. The only reason we took it in the starter build was to get the Demon Spikes cooldown reduction talent in the middle, but Soulmonger actually has no effect on whether you live or die. Now onto the final evolution of the build, and this is where you will fully accept that you don't need Demon Spikes up all the time, and you have to get more creative with living. Hopefully at this point, when you do pick what in my opinion is the best build, you've already figured out the basic rhythm and comfort of the spec, and in this final evolution, you will have considerably large increase in overall damage. This build Build sacks both demon spikes nodes up here. These were the longer spikes in the damage reduction after spikes, and it also sacks the free fury generation node from before. In exchange, you will take those three points and put them into these two fiery brand nodes here. What these do is make fiery brand buff your fire damage by 50% on affected targets and spread to a new enemy every one second. And remember, Fiery Brand gives you 40% damage reduction. This is where the node beneath that comes into play because you want to press Fiery Brand, then immediately press Immolation Aura as Immo Aura will work to extend the Fiery Brand on all targets as it spreads. Now this is where the default WoW UI will fail you. You absolutely need something to track Fiery Brand on nameplates because its spreading mechanic is effectively random, but you need to know how much it has spread, if it has even spread, and then which mobs the DR is on. If the 40% DR is spreading to baby mobs that basically won't live or do little damage, it can trap you into a false sense of security that will end up probably costing you your cheat death trinket. But if it spreads to high impact mini boss style mobs or just to the big tank hitters, then you know that you can chill because you're taking effectively half damage. So your fundamental rotational goals are pretty simple. You want to not overcap souls and you can do that by spending on soul cleave to consume two or spending on spirit bomb to consume all that are available. You also don't want to move unnecessarily as you will accidentally be picking up souls for just healing without using your spells to pick them up for added effects. If ever you see me jittering randomly in the background gameplay, know that that's technically wrong. 
I just do it because I'm having fun and couldn't care less if I had souls on the ground or not because I'm in no danger of dying. However, when shit's getting difficult, you might want to just plant and not move unnecessarily. Now, if you have one or less souls, you generate with Fracture, which generates two. Immo Aura's initial burst will generate a bunch depending on the size of the pack. Typically, it will just fill it with five. Elysian Decree will generate three, sometimes four because it's kind of bugged and you will have a passive soul generation from Sigil of Flame with your four-piece tier set. You also want to not waste Fury, and simply put, if you're overcapping Fury, use Soul Cleave. To generate Fury, we use Fellblade to generate 40, Bracture, which generates 25, and has a chance to reset Fellblade's cooldown. Sigil of Flame generates 30, and you get 10 Fury every five seconds when you parry an attack, period. Here's the cool thing about Vengeance. If you just focus on not overcapping each resource and keeping all your generators on cooldown, that's kind of most of your damage and healing. If we take a clip of me tanking here, these spells appearing are what I'm pressing and in the center of my screen has my souls on the top of my fury bar. You can see for the most part, I'm just playing the mini game of resource management. Now resources aren't your entire rotational consideration, obviously, so here comes a lot of nuance. Elysian Decree, when paired with a Fracture Cast, if you had zero souls, or just with two already existing souls will always fill your fury. You want to make sure after you Elysian Decree, you are following it up with a Spirit Bomb in AoE. That being said, at any time you can Spirit Bomb in single target if you can't hit the boss for whatever reason and need to consume souls to heal, or if you have more than two souls just got hit to low HP and you're freaking the fuck out, Spirit Bomb is okay for a panic heal. By nature of consuming more souls, it will heal you for more. However, on bosses, Soul Cleaving has the added benefit of stacking more frailty stacks, which again, is the bulk of your damage amp and damage reduction. So while Spirit Bombing gets you an immediate, probably bigger heal, Soul Cleave to consume two souls gets you a smaller, more efficient heal and future damage reduction via frailty stacks. Moving on, Fiery Brand on bosses is 40% damage reduction. The fire damage amp doesn't do much on single target. On AoE, you want to make sure your fiery brand is already spreading before you start the spirit bomb. Spirit bomb is all fire damage, same with Sigil of Flame and Immo Aura. You want these to be amplified by 50% on as many targets as possible. With regards to spirit bomb versus soul cleave, honestly, this matters less than people think. On single target, you will always want to soul cleave to consume souls and fury. It's worth soul cleaving for just fury spending if you don't need the souls heal at that moment. However, you will need to weave in fractures and Elysian decrees to make sure you have souls to consume with cleave. If you're wanting to just do pure damage and you don't care about healing at all, you don't need to generate any souls in single target. If you find yourself having enough fury to soul cleave and sitting at two fracture stacks, that's okay. Again, this is for pure damage. You have no real way to heal yourself without souls. Now in AoE, you want to build as many frailty stacks as you can while Fiery Brand is spreading. Remember, frailty increases everything for you. It's damage reduction, damage increase, and leech. In practice, this will be about three to five frailty stacks, then you can reapply Immo Aura into the Spirit Bomb, Elysian Decree Spirit Bomb combo. On lower keys, the Fiery Brand spread and frailty stacks for damage done become impossible because the mobs die so fast. You can elect to target the highest HP mob in Soul Cleave, because remember Soul Cleave is also AoE, it's just a frontal cone. Or you can choose to mindlessly Spirit Bomb, again, on low keys. On super low keys, most of your damage will simply come from Sigil of Flame into Immo Aura into the Bomb Decree Bomb combo. And with regards to Immo Aura, just always keep it up. Don't die. So cleave to heal yourself before you refresh the Immo Aura, but Immo Aura has like 20 different passives working to help you out. Just keep Immo Aura up all the time. And remember, it's burst in AoE. Its immediate activation will probably fill your soul, so keep mindful of that. So I haven't spoken about the Hunt ability capstone from the class tree at all, because for Vengeance, there's not really much to it. Hunt will hit your target and spread to mobs you pass through or that are immediately around your target. This is a good spell to pull bosses with or just use it when you think the mobs will live for the most or ideally all of the duration of its dot. The hunt is very simple. Press button to do damage. There isn't much more to it. It looks really cool. It's also a really nice charge to the next pack ability when you don't have enough infernal strikes to jump to get there. But yeah, not much consideration goes into hunt. I just press the hunt and I see other DHs pressing the hunt whenever the pack just looks nice for it and you know it will get at least most of the value. Finally, enter meta if you're scared. There's no real rule to this. You have to know when you're personally scared or overwhelmed. You basically can't die in meta, not to melees at the very least, and Fracture will generate one additional soul in meta, which is just a nice bonus. Just know that in meta, you don't need to press demon spikes unless you actually think you might somehow die to physical damage. The extra armor from meta and demon spikes is pretty unnecessary, but your rotation doesn't change inside meta. It's just armor and HP, nothing more, nothing less. If you do ever meta and demon spikes at the same time, just keep in mind, 
demon spikesing in meta creates a gap somewhere after meta. So if, for example, you use both your charges of demon spikes in meta, you will leave meta and not have any way to gain parry or armor for a couple seconds. So while it's overkill to use it in meta, it might be the thing that gets you killed right after meta in a high enough fortified key, for example, or on like a weight crest tree boss. And Fell Devastation does pretty good AOE damage, decent overall frontal. It's good enough to hold aggro, but it's really not that much. And it puts you in meta for a few seconds. If you think you want to use meta and Fell Dev, meta first, then Fell Dev will extend it. If you Fell Dev and that puts you in meta for a few seconds, then you press actual meta, it will not add the times. Pressing actual meta will overwrite the timer. But both Fell Dev and meta allow you moments to relax and hold off on Demon Spike's use and buy time for things like Fiery Brand and Elysian Decree to come back up. It also is really nice to meta in moments of gathering packs because usually you don't have the standstill ability to sit there and generate, but meta will keep you alive. Now, Feldev does heal you. Ignore that though. It heals you for a meaningless amount that scales with targets, I think. Again, it doesn't matter. You will see your health like kind of not move when you're Feldeving, but it generally doesn't really go up. Meta has a 50% true heal. What that means is it heals you for half your HP. That heal is like a server side heal. I don't know exactly how it works, but the important thing is that it will go through any healing reduction you have on you. Now, Necrotic, the Mythic Plus Affix is no longer in the game, but if ever you have some sort of thing hitting you for a lot of your health and you have meta up, meta will always get you that 50% heal, regardless of what you have on you and what debuffs are going out. But the TLDR for meta and Feldev is they just buy you time if you feel panicked or rushed. They will considerably slow down your damage intake, especially at the start of pulls, and also always let your Feldev fully channel for the CDR and resource refund thanks to this capstone talent that we discussed before. All right, let's recap the rotation stuff before we get into the utility, tips and tricks, and a pretty big bug that you need to know about. So you enter a pack with Sigil of Flame, Immo Aura, and Fiery Brand if it's up. Your goal is to then build some frailty stacks if the key level isn't super low. After you're at three to five frailty stacks, reapply Immo Aura, Spirit Bomb into Elysian Decree into Spirit Bomb. You're going to be doing that combo a lot. You can repeat this if you have multiple Elysian charges. Then your goal is to not overcap on either resource. Keep your spenders on cooldown, Spirit Bomb at four to five souls, or Soul Cleave if you're overcapping Fury or dropping below a couple frailty stacks. And remember, keep Immolation Aura up as much as possible and keep Sigil of Flame up overall as much as possible. Remember, if you double up on Sigil of Flame, this is giving you more instantaneous damage at the cost of overall Sigil of Flame damage, uptime, and soul gen. Also, you always want something defensive rolling in the opener for packs. The act of setting up frailty, spreading fiery brand, and spirit bombing is keeping you alive, but it's the moments leading up to this full setup where you take the most damage. You can elect to precast demon spikes when you're entering the pull. If you have no souls or fury going in, then hold the other charge of demon spikes until after fiery brand falls off. Off if it's spread to the right targets, or you feel like you have a hard time healing yourself back up. You can bridge downtime in Demon Spikes with Meta or Feldev, or if you have high frailty stacks on the mobs hitting you the hardest, you can sometimes just hang out with just your frailty stacks reducing damage and your standard soul building spending rotation keeping you alive. On bosses, remember the spirit bomb nuance we talked about before, and then basically just make sure you stack frailty as high as possible. Hold Demon Spikes, Fiery Brand, Feldev, Meta, and Elysian Decree for when you know big hits are coming, or Elysian Legion Decree prior if you're running out of souls, then make sure you meet every boss's hit with a soul cleave that consumes two souls and heals a backup. Boss melees, boss tank busters, anything, you always want an immediate soul cleave right after, and you want your fiery brand or meta or feldev or anything that prevents damage reduction, you want that before. But the damage reduction strat of reducing damage does not work in the vengeance kit without the healing part after. Likewise, the healing part will stop working without using your defensives to dampen that damage and extend your effective health. Now, I know I didn't give any bullet point or numbered list rotations in this guide. That's because I think learning a guide like that is really bad. Especially as tank, you need to be comfortable on a fundamental level, not just pressing buttons because the guide writer told you to. That's why hopefully this rotation section hit right, because my goal was to teach you the goals of the spec and explain what nuance I can. Remember, tanking is feels craft, and I strongly recommend experimenting with your own talent choices sometimes and recording your own gameplay to see what went wrong. If you want more info about tanking in general, check out my recently updated pug tanking guide. There's a lot of knowledge in there. But again, comment below and let me know how this guide structure is going so far. My goal is to make it so that when you learn Vengeance and you play it next patch, you don't have to watch another guide next patch. 
you just kind of already know the logic of the spec and you can adapt to any changes that the developers or tuning makes. Now moving on to utility and bugs and a special bonus talent build. The major bug with Vengeance right now is your first hit does not generate threat. For example, Sigil of Flame or Elysian Decree. These both do a chunk of damage, but if you pull with them, be ready to throw something else to generate threat because your healer or melee DPS are moments away from getting crit meleeed back to the graveyard. To get around this bug, you either have to double cast spells wasting resource, like you may need to Sigil of Flame, but immediately Elysian Decree so no one dies, even though it will waste and inefficiently off balance your rotation. The other solution is to get the mobs in combat before throwing these spells. You can do this by just throwing a glaive into the pack immediately before throwing your sigil or pre-activating Immo Aura on your way into the pack so the ticks will generate some threat or be the first hit. I also just like ripping the hunt in the packs as you just enter it in cool fashion with also a lot of damage. As soon as any mobs have anyone targeted, you can generate threat as normal. It's just that the first hit that begins combat will not generate any threat. This bug is also why you need to pull bosses with taunt and hold taunt on packs to pick up lost aggro before it kills anyone. Very frustrating, but this bug has been in the game for absolutely ages, so assume there's no fix in sight. Utility wise, DH is very simple. Silence Sigil will silence cast and prevent further cast for a few seconds. This is enhanced by Evoker Oppressing Roar, so if you want to combo with a friend, you can get a really nice long silence out. Just know that as soon as the silence ends, any mob that can cast probably will cast, so be ready to kick immediately after. Sigilla changes an AoE grip, which is nice to align the mobs into a Feldev or into a Legion Decree Spirit Bomb combo. A lot of builds don't like running Sigilla Chains. I strongly recommend running Sigilla Chains. It's just major quality of life for you, your group, and it's just a really cool ability. It's an AoE grip. You can also use this to displace mobs and have them cancel their casts. Note that level 71 mobs and bosses are immune to CC, meaning that they are immune to all your sigils besides flame. However, some mobs and even bosses like Lady Waycrest, even though they're immune to silence, the sigil will still just kick their cast and not silence. You'll have to experiment with what other mobs this may work on. So just try tossing a silence every now and then and just see if it kicks something. Sigil of Misery, or more commonly called Fear Sigil, can also be used to stop cast. It breaks on damage, so think of it like a half second stun that won't contribute to the stun DR. Fear Sigil will put you in combat with mobs, so you can also use it to stop a patrol. But keep in mind, those mobs will run to you once it breaks. And they will also receive bolstering stacks when your current pack dies. It does put only you in combat, however. So if you're a Night Elf, and the mobs can be feared, so not undead or mechanical, you can Fear Sigil run through first, then have your group run through and everyone stand away, then shadow meld and you will drop combat with the mobs and all as well. This is similar to a hunter, freezing trap, feign, death skip, but it's AOE and you just need Fear Sigil up and obviously be a Night Elf. With your three sigils, you can basically stop most kicks in most packs throughout a dungeon. The bottom right side Spectre Talons make it so that you have two charges of each sigil and the sigils are larger, last longer, and using any sigil takes three seconds off the CD of all other sigils. Remember your tier set takes cooldown off the of sigil of flame. This means with these talents and the tier set, you can throw three to four times as many sigils per dungeon than you could before. So don't hesitate at all to silence mobs into a grip when they cast, into a fear sigil to cancel the cast, into another silence, into another fear, into another grip, into your AOE stun. This is the sign of a better DH when they're taking initiatives like this. Just be consistent about it so your group knows that if you have your sigils up, they're available if they're tracking your cooldowns. And lastly, of course, as a DH, you have imprisoned. This can be used to skip mobs or hold mobs out of combat. Chances are your most common use will be to cage a mob in the pack you're fighting to cancel their current cast. Between your sigils, your own interrupt, your chaos nova stun, groups should notice considerably less cast going off with a vengeance tanking. Now for the bonus talent build. This build doesn't take spirit bomb at all. Instead, you take calcified spikes top left because you have to spend a point, unfortunately, in that top third of the tree and you take the free Fury Generation talent in the middle. You can elect to not take Sigil of Chains for this even more damage talent to the left. However, Sigil of Chains quality of life, as I said, is way too high for me to ever give this up. This build is technically behind in damage compared to Fire Damage Spirit Bomb build with the Fiery Brand spreads. However, it's extremely low intensity and super chill. You effectively just Soul Cleave, and then if you need healing, generate souls and Soul Cleave. You can still throw your Fiery Brand for the AoE damage reduction via spreading and still keep Sigil of Flame and 
ammo aura up as you did before, but most of the build is just hanging out in soul cleave. Remember, soul cleave is only frontal, so mob positioning just got 10 times more important. The tankiness of this build comes from the insanely high 10 plus frailty stacks you will regularly have on all the mobs. The trade-off is you lose a lot of massive pull count AoE damage in that sometimes mob will just not get hit by your soul cleave in situations where they would get slammed by spirit bomb. But on lower count dungeons or bad weeks like fortified bolstering, you can run this build and just sit back, relax and spam soul cleave. The reason I added this as a bonus build is because there's less synergy with fiery brand buffing your AoE combo and less safety from big spirit bomb heals. It can be more or less fun depending on the person playing, but also this is technically never going to beat a spirit bomb build unless you can always have a three to five target pulls that are always stacked in front of you 100% of the time. Also. Having Monk debuff for Soul Cleave damage and the Warrior for attack power buff helps to make this build more competitive. It's just something fun I run every now and then whenever I'm doing like vault keys and stuff like that when I want less intense, more chill gameplay. That's going to be all for now. Hopefully you enjoyed and learned a lot. I know this guide was different from the standard format of typical class guides, but hopefully it's more effective. I'll be proactive in the comments as usual to answer any questions. Later!